Hello friends. Today I'm going to show you how to use a multi protocol gateway in the data power. This is a series of uh, tutorials uh, where I'm introducing you to the data power and introducing you about how to configure various objects on the data power. So in this session, uh, we will see how to configure the multi protocol gateway and how to utilize its capabilities. Before we go ahead, uh, the agenda for today's session is uh, twofold. Uh, one in which uh, we are uh, we will get acquaintance about uh, the capabilities of multi protocol gateway, and uh, the second um, in uh, uh, next few minutes we will also see uh, how to uh, configure one such capability of multi protocol gateway. So to start with, uh, multi protocol gateway is. Uh, uh, a very versatile object in the data power and you can say it's the most powerful object in the data power so it has various capabilities uh, it truly lives by its name so uh, first of all uh, let's see why it is multi -pro why it is called multi protocol gateway <coughs> the primary task of a multi protocol gateway is to uh, convert one protocol from another so for example uh, let's say that you want uh, your clients to be on uh, HTTPS, but uh, you do not want your backend system to be on uh, HTTPS. You want to be th them on the HTTP. In that case, uh, you will use a multi-protocol gateway as a SSL termination endpoint, such such that your clients will connect to multi this uh, object in a HTTPS way, uh, while this object will connect to your backend server in an uh, over an HTTP protocol. So the protocol conversion from HTTPS to HTTP will be taken care by uh, MPGW which is multi protocol gateway. There is another use of this uh, multi protocol gateway. So you can uh, if you are using uh, RESTful service, uh, RESTful web service in your organization. So uh, web service proxy is not the way to go. So normally people use multi-protocol gateway in order to expose web services proxy to their clients. So this is how uh, multi-protocol gateway works. There are other uses as well of the multi-protocol gateway. So you can utilize MPGW to host a, a FTP, SFTP gateway in your organization such that uh, inside your organization uh, people will uh, see uh, this uh, MPGW as an FTP gateway. So you provide, a, you, you will uh, distribute username and password to your clients uh, inside your organization and say that, hey, whenever you need to do uh, a transfer to that particular vendor, do an FTP. Uh, you provide uh, uh, the IP address and the port name of the data power uh, and uh, inside your organization, people will look at this object as an FTP site but uh, you can configure the mpgw to uh, negotiate uh, sftp on on people's behalf uh, so on the one side uh, the people inside your organization is connecting with your data power via ftp while you are transferring file to a to your business partner or particular vendor via sftp so these are couple of uh, things that can be done with uh, mpgw MPGW is clearly an advanced topic and it has much much more capabilities than what I have described but uh, these are the typical scenarios which are particularly or widely used in industry so enough talks uh, let's go ahead and see a particular use case in which uh, your clients uh, uh, your clients are uh, connecting to the data power using an HTTPS protocol while uh, you will be connecting to the backend server in uh, HTT via HTTP protocol. So let's kick start. Go to the multi protocol gateway, and uh, I have created one for that. Uh, let me click on that. Yeah, so I am now here. This I have configured this multi protocol gateway so that clients can connect to this gateway in an HTTPS way while I am connecting, I mean this gateway is connecting to the backend server in an HTTP way. So uh, let me tell you how to configure a multi protocol gateway. First you need to provide a name of it. 
then an optional summary then you need to provide uh, what type of backit system you are so there is an option that uh, you can connect to a static backend and there is an option that you can connect with a dynamic backend dynamic backend is for dynamic routing which is an advanced topic so I'm not uh, not touch uh, in this uh, introduction introductory video uh, I will choose a static backend once you choose that you need to provide a backend URL this backend URL must contain the protocol name so as you can see this is over HTTP and I am trying to connect with AWS over here so this is the backend URL to which I want to connect leave XML manager and MPGW policy as default so initially uh, when you configure a multi protocol gateway uh, the MPGW policy will be uh, like none so you need to choose the default leave other options as default URL write policy etc uh, next uh, you need to configure the request and response type so request type uh, we expect as a non XML because we are uh, we are trying to access the Amazon web service through this uh, gateway and so the URL which so the request type is usually a non XML it's not a JSON uh, response type is uh, pass through the reason being we want all content from Amazon website to pass through the client which includes audio video all contents so and we do not want uh, it to be processed by the data power or even looked into the data power so we uh, we have uh, selected the pass through so there is a difference between non XML and pass through whenever you select non XML uh, the data power will allow non XML content uh, through the data power I mean it will allow the communication but even if it allows it will look inside that communication and try to shape it uh, in a customized way if you don't want that behavior you need not choose the pass-through you uh, I mean you need not choose the uh, non XML you need to choose the pass-through so that I, the bottom line is that if you want data power to look in inside your con content non XML content then choose non XML if you don't want your data power to look inside your content then choose pass-through there is a downside of it whenever you choose a pass through data power will not look inside your content and as a rule as a result the policies which you configure over here inside the multi protocol gateway policy which we will discuss in another video will not be invoked so that's a downside of it leave other options as default because you do not want a flow control data power to control the flow there are other options as well so I will suggest for the present purpose leave them as default because uh, uh, they are good in their default mode now the next important thing to configure over here is front side handler front side handler is something to which your clients will connect now you want your clients to connect on on the SSL uh, protocol so you need to configure a SSL HTTPS front side handler once you click it and once you try to configure an HTTPS front side handler you will see there are various parameters over here first you need to provide a name optional comment on which IP you want that handler to be installed the port number you can choose it leave this portion as default allow methods and version this is the allowed HTTP methods whichever you want to choose you can choose it's better to allow get method and remove the put method so you can do that but it's up to you how or which HTTP method you want to allow with the data uh, through the data power leave other options as default and the most important power point which you need to configure is the SSL proxy as how to configure an SSL proxy is a separate topic and I will touch base upon that in another video but uh, I will tell you what is the purpose of this SSL proxy basically in encapsulates the overall SSL handshake and communication that is happening over the SSL layer here what we are configuring is we are configuring a proxy in such a way that data power is acting as a SSL server so to an endpoint user data power is a SSL server so you need to provide a identification credential over here so if you 
try to click it, it will say that you need to configure several objects and then a reverse crypto profile. You can refer to another video when, where I have configured the uh, crypto profile. So you need to configure the crypto profile of the data power. And once you everything goes right, uh, you have the handler in the up state. So I have configured one handler beforehand because it will take quite a lot of time to configure a handler. So I have configured it and you can see that uh, uh, it has a reverse crypto profile installed over here. If you go to the reverse crypto profile, it has identification credentials installed over here. So this way I have configured the uh, SSL front side handler. Now uh, I am taking a pause and I will, uh, as an aside, I will uh, make you aware about a few things. In many of my videos, I cross reference that you need to see my another video and you need to go there to know how to configure a particular functionality. This is because of the reason that a top level object in the data power, for example, an MPGW is composed of many, many objects, many, many loosely coupled objects. Each objects have their own configuration. And if I try to create a top level object from ground up, it will take a whole lot of time. So uh, how I tackle with this situation is that I create the, I create uh, most of the objects in the tutorial video itself. But uh, if that is not possible because of time constraints, then I create some of the uh, complex objects, just like this front side protocol handler, uh, in sep uh, separately, and then I attach it over here, and then I try to create a separate video in which I exclusively show you how to create an HTTP front side handler. So please excuse me for that. Now, once uh, we have created it, uh, you can just created all other things. You can just uh, click on apply, and uh, you have that object in the up state. Now uh, I need to access Amazon Web Service, which is on running on HTTP protocol via this HTTPS object. So let me see what is the IP and the port. I think the IP is something like 10.202.4.254. So I will copy it and I will make it like this HTTPS. Then I will have to uh, just uh, collect the port. So the port number is 449. So I go here and I make it like four four nine and I make it like this and let's see what happens. Oh, so we are on Amazon. Now you can try to play around in Amazon. So for example, if I try to click this video, let's see what happens. Yes, so the video is playing. Right, so the video is playing. So uh, I can only say that uh, uh, multi-protocol gateway is a very powerful object and uh, it can be utilized in many more noble ways than uh, one is shown over here i have just tried to explain you how to create how to use data power as an ssl endpoint in such a way that your clients connect with the data power using https while you, your object is negotiating with the backend or communicating with the backend over http channel this has a huge advantage and this has a really really uh, big users inside an enterprise. So that's all for uh, this video uh, for the multi-protocol gateway. Thanks for watching. This is Achitabh.